Hello, let's talk about Codeflare. So, generative AI has certainly created demand for optimizing Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters for the training and fine-tuning of foundation models. To meet this need, Red Hat and IBM Research have invested in building Codeflare, an open source stack that we provide through Red Hat OpenShift AI. In this demo, we will show you how you can use Ray alongside Codeflare components like the SDK and our multi-cluster app dispatcher, or MCAD, to manage and prioritize real-time access to cluster resources and schedule distributed workloads for batch processing. Let's dive a little deeper and demonstrate what you can actually do with the stack as well as how to do it. First, we'll begin by popping into the Rhodes dashboard and launching a Codeflare Jupyter Notebook server. So we'll go through and select that. And now, once we're inside, you'll see that I've prepared a number of tutorial and example notebooks for us to walk through today. Now, let's begin with the basics in this first notebook, defining and launching array resource cluster, examining cluster status and details, and taking the cluster down and freeing up those resources. The first thing we will do is authenticate with our desired user account if the default notebook user isn't desired. Once authenticated, let's continue by defining our desired resource cluster using the cluster and cluster configuration objects. We can specify the desired CPU, GPU, memory, and number of workers we'll need for whatever dev worker jobs we have ahead. Once the cluster object is created, an app wrapper will be generated in the background, matching the requested resources. When we want to bring up this Ray resource cluster, we call cluster.up, and this submits the app wrapper to MCAD, our queuing system. If the resources and quota are available, MCAD will pass this request over to the Kubre operator to bring up our resource cluster, and if not, it will remain pending on the queue. Now, looking at the cluster status, we can see it's pending, so we can call cluster.waitready to wait for the Ray cluster to be ready to use. This is especially helpful if you want to just run all the notebook cells in sequence, as it will guarantee resource availability for the cells below. Since it looks like our cluster is ready, let's take a look at the status again. Looks like it's up and running, so let's make sure that the specs of the Ray cluster are as requested. Calling cluster.details, we can see we got exactly what we asked for, as well as some additional information that will be useful for later. We've shown you how to request and secure resources, but how do you actually use them? Well, there's two main ways, submitting direct patch jobs and workloads, and developing interactively. Let's start with the interactive development case. For this example, let's try an interesting task. Fine-tuning the distillbert large language model on the IMDB dataset. For that, use InstaScale when defining our cluster in order to scale some GPUs. And so we'll call our usual cluster.up and wait ready, and note that scaling up GPUs and provisioning machines from AWS will likely take a few minutes. So, now we'll call cluster.details, make sure we got what we expected, and we've got our two GPU workers ready to go. Once our Ray cluster's up, you'll notice that we have the ability to view both the Ray cluster URI and dashboard URI via the SDK. After grabbing the cluster URI, we can connect directly to our Ray cluster via the Ray Python client by calling ray.init. Here we can also pass in any additional Python package requirements we may have for the work ahead. Now, once connected to the Ray cluster, the interactive development pattern can begin. We can write functions and code as we would normally using stock standard PyTorch, Lightning, Hugging Face Transformer code. And all we do is simply add the ray.remote tag on top to indicate that we would like to execute these functions on our remote resource cluster. For example, we've written a training loop function for the distillbert fine-tuning. When it's time to try something out, rather than call the function directly, we'll wrap it in a ray.get. 
and that'll call our function remotely, executing it on our resource cluster. Here, we can see that the logs for our, fun our fine-tuning task have started up. Now that the training loop has kicked off, we can also confirm it's utilizing the resources we promised. Going into the console, we can see GPU utilization for both GPUs that we just scaled up have gone from zero to max. And so for us, it took about 700 or so seconds, and we successfully fine-tuned our model through that training loop we had written above. So, at this point, we've almost got the basics of the Codeflare stack usage down. All that remains is direct, fire and forget, distributed training job submission. And so, I would like to finish this demo with an even more interesting use case. In the last notebook, we are going to try submitting a job for fine-tuning GPT-2 on the Wikitext dataset. Now, when pulling up our Ray cluster this time, we'll go through similar steps. Once we have our cluster, we are going to directly submit a job to kick off our GPT fine-tuning. To do that, we'll start by defining some script arguments that we'll want to pass into our training script, and then we'll use a DDP job definition object. If you take a look here at our training script, we've got nothing special going on. This is a stock Hugging Face Transformers fine-tuning script directly from their example repo. This job submission requires no modifications necessary to any training code, whether it be written in PyTorch, Lightning, Hugging Face, you name it. If we look at that DDP job definition object, we're passing in that script as well as a name for the job, the script arguments, and our Python package requirements. That's it. And once we call submit, we'll get a job object back. Now, using that job object, we can see both the status and logs of our job. So if we look at the status, currently pending, and if we give that just a second or so, it should switch to running. And so here you can see we can also see the logs. Now, We'll give this just a few seconds, and in real time, we'll wait a few, like, 30 minutes or so. And so we've completed our fine-tuning, and if we take a look back in the OpenShift console, we can see that the resources that we requested for this job were fully utilized throughout the fine-tuning run. And so we have full GPU utilization for the duration of our run. Finally, we can call cluster.down when we're completed with our fire-and-forget training job bring those resource cluster down, as well as all of the resources that had been scaled up, and your OpenShift cluster will return to the state that it began in. And so with that, we have now demonstrated a number of various ways to utilize the Codeflare stack through the SDK, as well as multiple examples of large language model training and fine-tuning. You've learned to request and scale resources, develop interactively, and directly submit batch jobs to acquire resources all in Python. Thank you.